Welcome back and time for another round of Who Is My Birth Father? So I think the last time we talked about my birth father was in my Ancestry Update video of just how convoluted my family tree has become. It is kind of all over the place right now, but I'm beginning to sort it out. I'm really, really close to the end. And last time we talked, I mentioned that there is a possibility of two birth fathers because I'm not sure which one it actually is because they are full brothers and neither of them thinks that it's them. They don't remember my birth mother. And so it was kind of left at that. And now I'm trying to narrow it down and figuring out which one is my birth father. Neither of them are willing to do a ancestry or paternity test at this time. And I don't want to push any buttons. So I've actually been talking to the child of one of them. And she's been really helpful. I, she is the possible cousin, possible half-sister that I think I mentioned at the end of that last video. And she's agreed to do an ancestry DNA test for me. But her test results came back and they are inconclusive. So that was extremely frustrating to find out. By inconclusive, I mean ancestry DNA can only do so much in accurately guessing a person's relationship to you. And it's based on something called centimorgans or CMs. So if you've ever taken an ancestry DNA test, you'll know that it'll say, this person is related to you probably this way, and they have this much CM, centimorgans, shared with you. I don't know the perfect science of it, but basically you can kind of estimate relationships of people to you based on how much DNA you share. So for a half sibling, usually around say 1600 CM. For a first cousin, it can be around 800 is the average sometimes, but there are lots of gray areas in there. And unfortunately, my maybe cousin, maybe half sister is still a maybe cousin, maybe half sister because her CMs were right in the middle. It was too high to be a first cousin, too low to be definitively a half sibling. But she's right in that sweet spot of, well, bittersweet spot of, we can't tell for sure. There's no definitive way of saying, yes, she's absolutely one or the other. So I'm stuck again. And I did find out, if you've ever heard of GEDmatch, G-E-D Match, it's a website that you can upload your raw DNA file to, and it kind of breaks it down a bit more scientifically for you, shows you all the little details, and it matches you up like Ancestry would with anybody else who's also uploaded their DNA to GEDmatch. And I found out that if she uploads her DNA file to GEDmatch, which only takes about five minutes, processes about a day, I can look at our X chromosome. So the X chromosome is something that you inherit from your parents. Again, I'm no scientist, but I know that if we both share a full X chromosome with each other, since we are assuming we're sisters, we share father. If we share full X chromosome, then we have to be sisters. If we only share partial X chromosome, then it kind of, it rules out the sister and goes more into the cousin range. So I offered that as a sort of, oh, here's another option. Maybe this can get us our answer. But in the time that I've messaged her and we've been chatting on and off, unfortunately she's kind of soft responding when I ask her about Jedmatch and maybe she's getting a little bit of cold feet. She's been extremely helpful so far. She might just be busy, but it's been quite a few months now, so I've kind of been losing hope on if she'll help me with Jedmatch, which is okay. Um, frustrating, but uh, maybe she'll change her mind, but in the meantime, I had a backup plan. So I found a child of the other possible birth father, and he has agreed to test for me. So he's currently taking the Ancestry DNA test, which should be processed in about a month. And hopefully, 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 if his DNA comes back definitively, yes, 100%, half brother, there you go, or 800 CM, for example, has to be a cousin, no possibility of half sibling, then we also have our answer that way. I am terrified that his will also come back right in that middle range of inconclusive. I'm really hoping that's not what happens, but that's where I'm at right now. Um, it's a long road. I've taken some breaks along the way. 
I took a little hiatus for a while there just to step away from it for a little while and take a breather for myself and just focus on me. And now I'm ready to go back into it, share where I am with all of you and hopefully get some more answers. And at this point, a lot of people might say, oh, it seems really hard. It seems it's been really hard on you. Why is it such a big deal? Why do you keep going? You kind of have an answer. You can kind of guess. Why not just leave it at that? And some people might, and that's fine. If you, if you feel comfortable, you know, I kind of have an answer. I don't really want to dig into it further. I'm happy where I am. I completely support you. I'm just a, a bit of a perfectionist to a fault. I want my answers and I really want to be able to say definitively who my birth father is. And it's hard to describe the feeling of not quite having that puzzle piece in there. It's not a puzzle piece that I need to be, you know, fulfilled in life or, you know, happy. I am happy and I don't need this person in my life. And that's not what I'm looking for, but I just want to know this last bit of information for myself, for who I am, for these possible siblings, to be able to finally finish my ancestry family tree, my biological side, and be able to take out that unknown and put in a name and face. That would mean a lot to me and it would feel really good. So that's why I'm still going <laughs> and Wish me luck, I hope these test results come back more definitively and I will update you as soon as I know more about those results and hopefully that will be soon. Until next time.